welcome back to anime review okay so today we're doing mysteria friends as the review uh this is gonna be probably my first negative review of an anime but uh first i'm just gonna kind of try and make this a little bit more structured than usual so first i'm gonna kind of sort it by that didn't work sort of by the neutral kind of aspects of the show the very just this is what the show is and then i'm going to list the pros and then i'm going to list the cons and it's not necessarily that more pros makes it better it's just the severity of the pros and cons that makes this thing not so good to me but anyways the gist of it is basically in general they're shorter episodes than usual about 14 minutes long it is a yuri show definitely and the main characters are these two girls one is like a bashful dragonborn girl literally dragonborn and the other one is a kind of childish energetic blonde character uh i don't remember the blonde girl's name to be honest but i know the dragon girl's name is Greya. both are princesses of their respective homelands the academy that they go to because it is they're going to a magic school academy is in the blonde girl's country and the dragonborn girl is from a separate country far away or something they don't really explain it but yeah so on to pros i uh i think the setting is actually really cool the whole magic school and i know it's not unique i know it's not new but i really like that setting i like magic i like fantasy and the fact that it's in a school makes it a little bit easier for it to have set up things for like slice of life kind of comedy. And again, Dragonborn! They, shit, they use that terminology. Not only is magic neat, but the animation in this anime is absolutely beautiful. And it, throughout the show, there it's like peppered with little funny moments, but unfortunately they're kind of rare. Along with great animation comes a cute character design. That, uh, as everyone's favorite girl in the show probably is. Rhea, the dragonborn girl. Look at that design. Look at it. Now touch, touch it. Taste it. Feel it. Unfortunately, the pros kind of stop there, though. It's basically the only good parts about it are that it has good animation, a cool setting that I happen to like, and good character design. But that's about it. That's about all it has. In general, the core of the story is, well, I, honestly, I don't really get the story, to be honest. There's, it doesn't seem like there's much of a spine for the plot. It just feels more like a slice of life, try to be, a, trying to be a slice of life kind of anime in terms of the episode moments. I just remember specifically, I first started thinking this anime was particularly stupid during, I think, the second episode when there was a problem with the Dragonborn girl. She seemed like she had a massive fever and was really hot and in a bed and she kept, she wouldn't stop moving around and stuff. Uh, and they couldn't figure out what was wrong with her. They couldn't figure out what to, what kind of medicine to give her and none of it, but none of the medicine they gave her was working. So the other character, the blonde, goes through this ridiculous, nonsensical journey through what is, I guess, the hidden archives of the library of the school. And... I get the whole like forbidden knowledge thing and making it difficult to get to but like the the journey she goes through is absolutely ridiculous like it looks like it could be a montage of some you know monolithic months long journey in a different show like it's ridiculous i cannot stress that up it's absolutely ridiculous and then at the end of it at the fucking end of all of that, of that giant journey, and you know, rushing to get all these ingredients and forbidden knowledge, didn't fucking matter. It was all, it was all pointless. It may as well have been filler. It had nothing, it had no impact on the actual outcome of the episode. No, nothing fucking happened. It, it made no sense whatsoever. It was, again, ridiculous. And then the show also does something that I particularly just hate in shows. Is when the characters become super over dramatic and super emotional and react ridiculously that's my favorite word i guess ridiculously to the tiniest things like for example let's just say i handed you a banana because you were a little peckish after eating lunch and you for some reason decided to react in this way uh, th thank you for the banana senpai 
That was so sweet of you. It's fucking stupid. I fucking hate it. And I can't stress that enough. I really hate that in shows. It it ruins it. Like, obviously, I don't hate unrealistic reactions in shows. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to watch anime. But there, there comes a point. There comes a point where that just doesn't need to happen. Like, I tried to sit through this show. I tried to watch all of it because it's this season. And I think there were about, like, eight episodes out or something at the time. I only managed to get four episodes. I wanted to stop after the first episode. But I only managed to get through four episodes before I was like, I cannot watch any more of this. I tried to keep going just for the sake of giving it a chance. Seeing if it would develop more. I just couldn't get any further. And the episodes were shorter than usual. So, for like... I get that some people enjoy shows like this, especially because there are moments that are at least mildly enjoyable for me, but the majority of the show has moments that are ruined by the actions or reactions of the characters themselves, and it takes what could have been a great, unique show and turns it into another generic feel-good show, or at least it's trying to be like one of those feel-good shows, where the protagonist, even though they're teenagers, have the emotional, mental capacity of like a three or four-year-old. That being said, as far as I'm aware, the anime itself is based on a video game, and some of them can be good, but for the majority of them, I would say they don't really pan out to be great. They can be good, uh, but typically they're a little less fleshed out in terms of story than shows or shows that were based off of a manga or light novel. And ends up falling short in plot, even though it has beautiful animation, it's not going to get a good score. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a 2 out of 5. That, uh, I would give it a 1, but the animation was so good, and it's not like I completely hated every single second of it. So, 1, not recommended, but it also is just completely not my type of show. So if you're into something like Nichi Joe but not funny, and more just etchy, then go ahead and watch this. I don't recommend it, again, 2 out of 5, not recommended. But uh, I hope I managed to convey everything. I, uh, I have a notepad open, so hopefully I got a little bit more detail across without any spoilers or much spoilers, because I, I did describe that nonsensical library adventure. And I hope that this was, you know, at least as good, if not better, than my other videos. I'm trying to improve this. I'm trying to make them a little bit more structured. Please leave your feedback in the comments below. And thank you all for watching. Uh, have a good day, and uh, goodbye.